my name is Simon. Um, just before I start, I'm speaking on behalf of the Institute of Direct and Digital Marketing. They have a stand just outside of here. They just asked me to mention about their training courses with a incentive off. So please feel free to go over to the stand afterwards. My name's Simon. I work at the Met Office and I'm Digital Marketing Manager at the organization. And today's talk will be specifically around four key areas. Um, I'll give you a brief introduction, as I'm sure you all know about the Met Office. Um, how we do and how we uh, create uh, digital marketing at the Met Office in-house. How we've created a uh, six-step um, approach to SEO and to assist in our SEO as well as content through the site. And finally, um, I'll finish off with a, a case study on the pollen forecast, um, which we used last year. Presentation should last hopefully around 20, 25 minutes, so there should be some time for any questions you may have at the end. I'm not going to be providing a weather forecast today. I just wanted to let you know that. I'm not a meteorologist. I'm from digital marketing, so uh, just in case you're wondering if there's going to be a forecast this morning. Um, the Met Office has grown into a recognized global leader in meteorological services, um, and we're a trading fund, which means we can operate commercially, um, slightly different to normal public sector. We sort of sit in the middle of public sector and private sector, where we are seen by government to create revenue through our commercial sectors. As well as digital, we also work in the aviation sector, insurance, health, road and rail, and also media, as I'm sure you're aware, providing forecasts and climate science to media outlets such as the BBC and ITV. In 2009, we became the first government department to introduce advertising and sponsorship through our website, which helps to drive incremental revenue streams back into the Met Office. This presentation will hopefully provide you with um, an actionable plan to create an SEO and content strategy that we've used in the Met Office, but hopefully you could use within your own organizations, what, whatever sector it may be. And then I'll then, as I mentioned, I'll finish off with a pollen forecast content plan as to how we did that. The Met Office itself, as you can imagine, is very, very scientifically led. Um, Predominantly, most of the employees there are working in climate science, meteorological, weather forecasting, etc. So um, digital within the organization is a relatively new area. The team itself coincided with the launch of advertising and sponsorship in 2009 and grew from a team of three of us to now a round of a team of eight or nine. We have objectives to deliver the st digital strategy now for the whole organization. Our remit has expanded to cover all our digital channels, which include social media, video, mobile, and apps. And for the website, the team's specific objectives are focused around increasing our reach, monitored through our web analytics, and supporting our advertising and sponsorship strategy in meeting our annual revenue targets. The objectives and strategy of the digital plan are focused around servicing predominantly our B2C market, which are obviously yourselves, the general public, looking for weather information on the site and providing relevant, interesting and more frequently shareable weather content. Also, the remit of, our, of the digital team is not just to purely focus on our team objectives, but to also work with and provide consultancy across the organization as a whole in moving the Met Office to embrace digital marketing through all our interactions with the public and with our commercial sectors. As I mentioned, in its earlier days, digital marketing was seen as very much a silo within the organization. Um, it was very much, they do digital, they do SEO, they do a bit of social media, get on with it, drive more traffic to the site, and drive incremental revenue through your advertising. So a number of us came from um, private sector. Myself, I've worked in startups for a number of years, and a few of the other team are from media and also um, e-commerce. So we brought in a wealth of new skill sets, I suppose, into the organization. Um, and at that stage, we're, we, we're beginning to use that to um, sell digital across the organization as well as train internal staff into best practice digital. 
the site itself, just um, some brief background to that. We, we operate, bizarrely, even though we're government, we operate in a very, very co um, commercial and competitive weather sector. So there's a number of generic weather suppliers, such as the Weather Channel, AccuWeather, Meteo Group, who are very, very privately dread, um, very, very digitally focused. Um, so as well as generic, we, we um, are also up against a lot of niche weather providers as well. So specific sites targeting specific audiences, such as your surfing, holiday weather, or outdoor activities. So there's a, it's a wealth of very, very highly competitive for a government organization to kind of work in. So it's quite a unique position for us. Um, being privately um, targeted, but also coming across as very much um, for, the, for the general public as being a government website. A key focus, um, as a specific area for us, obviously the Met Office is our brand is very well known in the UK. So 95% of our traffic is UK based. And being a recognized public brand is emphasized for our SEO activity, where we experience a high ratio percentage of brand terms from search engines compared to our non-brand keywords and phrases. A key focus also with the SEO strategy has been the objective to drive incremental visits by optimizing existing and our new content on the site and making this appeal and be relevant to a user's requirements. Our keyword list as part of our SEO plan is defined into three specific categories. Um, we look to target generic keywords, which are very much the high volume searches, such as your London weather, London weather forecast, Birmingham five day forecast, which drive dr lots and lots of high keyword volume throughout the year consistently. We then have a category two, which is more targeted, and this is around location specific terms. The rise in location based terms with Google reporting a 24% rise in searches accounted through local. Um, assist us in driving much more targeted content. The site, the Met Office site, has recently gone from 500 UK sites to 5,000 UK sites. So it provides us with a fantastic foundation to interact our weather content to localized uh, marketing strategies online. And finally, seasonal. So this assists to drive relevant, timely search volumes through, throughout the year. And this comes into our events calendar. So this, for example, could be keywords such as Glastonbury Music Festival, Six Nations Rugby, as well as seasonal weather, like the pollen count, snow, and not so seasonal at the moment, rain, which seems to be throughout the year. So the case for the events calendar, what we realized um, is that there was a notable rise, as I mentioned, for seasonal and location-based terms coming to the site. We also found during the cricket, the Ashes, a few years ago, the highest referring uh, site in terms of searches coming to our site or uh, traffic coming to our site was ESPN, um, the ESPN Crick Info uh, in Australia, wanting to know what the weather was going to be like based on targeted um, weather information and how it was going to impact whether it was going to be day four of the latest test. We're also beginning to find through our analytics correlations against key general public events that were happening throughout the year. So not, not seen as the Met Office as the place to go for information about Glastonbury, but Met Office as the place to go to understand how the weather may play out at Glastonbury, to understand when the general public were going to watch the rugby, Six Nations rugby across, across the UK and understand how weather was going to impact it. The events calendar also offers the opportunity for us on that note to create a USP, so a unique selling point to the Met Office over our competitors and provide more compelling targeted content, developing hubs, targeting key audiences. We have a content management system which came in play around 2009 when we integrated digital and the beauty of the content management system was that we could empower our internal staff to create content through the website. Obviously, we have quite a strict process in terms of brand messaging, tone of voice, um, any interesting or weather facts, are they scientifically um, sort of ticked off? Because we have to engage and we have to make sure we're providing that authoritative content online. But it provided us within our web team, within our digital team, the flexibility to create more and more content for the website itself. And specifically at the time, it allowed us to meet rising advertiser demand. More advertisers, more brands wanted to align their, their brand and their product offering with the weather. 
it was, um, if you begin to look at it, how weather impacts, not necessarily just your five-day forecast, but it, it impacts a plethora of other areas, commercial sectors. There's been a, a big rise this year as in, in the number of private sector organizations creating their own weather related products and services. Um, quite interestingly, just outside here, we have a company called WeatherFit, who are providing weather and how that impacts your pay-per-click targeting. So you can quickly see how weather is playing a much bigger picture. And this is how we saw it from the events calendar. But more importantly, going back to, as I was saying to you earlier, digital being relatively new in the Met Office, it allowed a very easy buy-in for us to understand and provide reasons why we need to create meaningful content getting buy-in from within the organization. So it wasn't necessarily just the digital marketing team driving this initiative. It was more so getting buy-in from the whole organization as digital is a new thing for the Met Office. This is a way we can engage with new audiences and getting our buy-in from our science team, from our communications team, from our technical team in driving more meaningful, relevant content through uh, the creation of a content plan. So with the events calendar, we, have, we obviously have key objectives as to why we're we doing this events calendar. So the overall objective is to create a central hub. So if you are looking to create an events calendar yourself, an editorial plan for your content plan for your own website, we saw it very, very easy to get engagement internally as creating a central hub of all events that we wish to promote and enable us to forward plan throughout the year. It's also a tactic, going back to our search engine optimization, to drive non-branded terms to the Met Office website. So not having to continuously rely on our branded terms. Obviously we have a high authority and relevance to the Met Office, but we wanted to start to engage in more keywords, high keyword volume that was perhaps non-branded to Met Office. It also provides an opportunity for us to be a lot more proactive in external sites, forums, blogs, industry-leading content associated with specific events that are taking place. For example, ESPN and sport. We have a very, very good relationship now with these types of sites that we're engaging them with specific weather content to satisfy their own user, their own user requirements. And also provides Met Office content to our external partners, such as our free-to-use weather widget, infographics, video, and I'll come on to a lot of these different tactics that we look to engage in external organizations at a later stage. The content plan and the editorial plan, more importantly also, can be used for our B2B B2 offering, our commercial sectors, as to how do we engage in the aviation industry online? How do we engage with our health-related content to an online audience? So content itself, the editorial plan itself, was really, really good engagement in getting buy-in across the organization. So finally, before I get to step one, we need to know our audience. And it's essential to understand who you're creating your, your content for and why. In the Met Office, we use Experian Hitwise. And this is a central part of all our analytics in segmenting our online audience. The key was to make the data we were analyzing actionable. So we created headline stats on the typical Met Office user comprising key demographics. From here, we created different consumer groups, of which there are a number of types. And I provided one example here for Escape to the Country, which is classified under Experian Hipwise. And rather than just, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Hipwise, rather than just looking at reams and reams of data, we just provided it into an actionable two-pager, the key facts of this target audience, the types of websites that this audience may engage with, the, the potential opportunities geared to the Met Office. So it was, it was using Experian Hitwise data, but geared for Met Office as to the reason, us selling reasons why we need to maybe perhaps engage with this audience and the opportunities specific to the Met Office, not necessarily specific to the whole of the UK. From analyzing the visit share data and the representational data provided by Hitwise, we can then begin to create these profiles of the types of most and least likely to visit our website in relation to the whole weather industry. So this first step we look to do is research the market for an events calendar or an editorial plan. We centralize a pool of ideas for event creation that tie into the key objectives of the event calendar. This includes analyzing our competitor websites, the types of keywords that they're using, the types of events that they're looking to engage in, 
taking place throughout the year, as well as looking at our historical and analytics and statistics from uh, Web Trends, which he uses our analytics supplier, Hitwise, as I mentioned, and Google Webmaster Tools going back over the last year. The beauty of an editorial plan is much of this content around weather is very seasonable and very, very cyclical. So it's very, very easy to create a hub of historical analysis. We also created a gaps and opportunities content plan, which provides a history of search and content terms that, dr that was driven to general weather sector and where the Met Office didn't drive as much potential. So gaps we defined as areas where there is content on the Met Office website to satisfy search terms, but the referral click-through rate is very low. Opportunities are areas where there are large search volume for something relevant to our target market, but there is absolutely no content on the Met Office website. So this very, very quickly provides actionable data to our content team, to our communications team, to our social media uh, team in, in plugging gaps and opportunities in relation to specific content that we're looking to plug. For events, a very, very easy, quick, and free to use tool is Google Trends. Generic keywords associated with this specific event are then analyzed using um, Google Trends and Google Keyword Tool to identify which terms and phrases to target to get a much better broad overview of the potential search demand before we start to set the ball rolling. Google Trends is also used to understand when there is a peak in search terms for this specific event. So in this example here, we have Glastonbury. You can obviously see there's a key peak in demand at the beginning of the year when the tickets are released, and obviously during the actual event taking place. So for us, from a content point of view, it was very, very easy to get buy-in without looking too in-depth as to when we needed this content live on the site, when we needed to start to optimize that content more specifically from our homepage maybe. Six Nation Rugby at the moment is taking place, and as you can see, going back the number of years, huge peaks in search demand. So again, the key for us is to understand how we can satisfy those search demand and potentially drive that traffic to the site. Going back to Experian Hitwise, this, we've also created seasonal dashboards that are specific to the Met Office. And these provide actionable insights also into the types of content we could be creating through the website and more importantly, getting buy-in across the organization. So these dashboards are not specifically within our team, they're shared right across the organization. Um, I think the example here is um, for, we were looking at pollen actually. So for pollen counts, hay fever, we can obviously see very quickly all the top search terms are associated with that type of um, content. And this provides us really, really good actionable insights during the season, before we start the season, as to the type of content, keywords, descriptions that we should be perhaps creating within our own optimized pages. And from all of this information, obviously it's all very good. It's all shared across the organization. What do we do with it all? So what we've done is we've created a content plan that banks all the requirements needed and which is shared right across the, the, uh, the team. So we've created a skeleton staff, if you like, across our digital team, our science team, our communications team, our social media team, um, our technical team that work together holistically in their own time, thankfully, um, in making sure we're getting this content live on the site at the right time. So, as you, sorry if it's a bit blurred, but as you can see, for example, we have certain areas of content, snow forecasts, white Christmas, skiing forecasts, flu, ice, and we've created these as the key hubs based on seasons of the year, when we need the content requirement by, has it been optimized, have we got comms buy-in, have we had a science input, more importantly, to, to drive our authority, do we need video? Is there any supporting content we should be driving this content for online? I.e., are we going to do an infographic around it? Are we going to create a specific video? Where is it going to go on the site? Has it been optimized in that time? And where are we going to be internally linking? So there's no point in us creating new content and leaving it. Is it internally linked within the whole site navigation and the site architecture? Step two. We look at then we look at the keyword research. So obviously insights into step one, researching the market, are going to provide you with lots of insights there. But step two is the keyword research. So insights from the internal search of the site is a great gold mine start. Are there any phrases and keywords already driving traffic to the subject? 
brainstorm internally in the organization, outside the organization, any friends, colleagues who may be looking at those key events that you can get ideas from. What are the keyword phrases and terms that you're looking to target? And also understanding our social media channels. What are people searching for? What are the latest trends that people are, are writing about? Six Nations Rugby, for example. What are the players' latest news, stories of the teams? All this type of content is really, really rich, um, real-time content that we can look to embed within the content itself and providing it rich, and at the same time, differentiate ourselves from our competitors. Creating the actual content page is where the CMS plays a part. So, key areas. Are we looking at on-page search engine optimization, the page titles, the headings of the content, the images, the URL, the navigation, where is it going to sit on the site? Are we internally linking back to other relevant areas of the site? Syndicated content, so how, how are we going to build a community online around this specific content or this specific landing page associated with the content? And more importantly, is this content different to what's already out there? Why is this content unique? Why, what would drive more users to perhaps the Met Office and the Weather Channel. Would this be shareable through social media channels? And importantly, by creating this new event page, how do you plan to integrate this with other areas of the site? So here's an example for the London Marathon last year. Um, and this just provides you with a key insight into how we've optimized the content around the London Marathon, how we've integrated specific weather forecasts around the London Marathon, for London weather, and how we've created more and more content and how it's shared. And it's a good landing page, a really good landing page, where that page itself was picked up by uh, running blogs, running websites, um, charities, sites that are associated with the London Marathon that they wanted to embed relevant content to the runners, the spectators that were going to the London Marathon. Um, and it was, a, it was a fantastic tool as um, used a lot through our, from looking at the link building as to what we created for there. And also email. So we have a, you can subscribe to our weather warning alerts and we also have an events email alert through the Met Office where you provide timely emails throughout the year as to when key events are taking place. Step three, once we have the content live on the site or whilst we're getting the content live on the site is looking at the link building. So referring back to our consumer groups as I mentioned earlier through Experian Hitwise, we can then begin to understand the types of websites and the potential opportunities that we can engage with this specific event community, i.e. the London Marathon. Where the customer group resides, what websites they use and even what competitor web websites they may be using. This provides us with a great basis to create a link building strategy. For each event, a link building plan is put together which identifies key websites we wish to engage with in driving this syndicated content. The types of tools, in terms of engaging with the audiences, it's essential to you have something worthwhile sharing and building an online relationship with. So here's a, just a mixed bag of syndicated content that we use. For example, video. So we went up to Wembley, um, Twickenham. We interviewed the stadium director. We just asked for 10 minutes of their time. Um, videos around how the weather impacts and how the weather impacts specific sporting events in this occasion. We've gone to Glastonbury, how the weather impacts um, roadies, for example, in setting up the stage, in setting up the band, something a bit more topical, a bit more off the wall, something that's going to be relevant, something that's going to be very much shared. Infographics, which we have on the far left-hand side, this is one we did for the London Marathon, which we pushed through our social media channels based on the content plan and a weather widget, which is a free-to-use widget, which we um, use. This is on uh, for Cows Week sailing, where we identified a number of websites that wanted to use relevant content, meaningful weather content for their own websites, where weather widgets were made. So this is just basically a mixed bag, if you like, of various different tactics you could potentially look to syndicate your audience with. And obviously, more importantly, how are we monitoring this all? So we use a very di few different metrics on this. We use um, Majestic SEO, which is a free-to-use version. This provides a great snapshot of activity to your executive or to your directors, getting buy-in from them, and also your uh, peers in other, in other departments, and showing them what you've helped me to provide has given us fantastic um, opportunities to create these shareable uh, links with other websites. 
Open Site Explorer, which I'm sure you're all familiar with through SEO Moz, gives a very good snapshot as to how many more links you're getting to your website. And all of this content is really, really easy, actionable, and shareable to the powers that be. Social media is step four. So from all of this activity, and I suppose you can do it in tandem with link building, um, is that we use a number of social media channels to help engage with different demographics through Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. We also use YouTube and the Met Office blog to help deliver our messages. This is a, uh, the social media channels are a key delivery channel in supporting our content plan and where we incorporate content around event calendar. So here's a few examples of what we're doing with the Six Nations at the moment with uh, sports retailer Kitbag. Engaging, as I'm sure you're all aware, you're going to hopefully sign up to the Met Office um, Twitter alert, which is very, very weather, 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 weather. But engaging with a new audience, trying something a bit different, sharing opportunities with a sports retailer about um, the Six Nations. We did one with Hunter Wellies during musical fe music festivals last summer. Something a bit different, engage with a whole new demographic. It's building a relationship for us with Hunter, with other brands external to the Met Office, and you're building these hubs, and it's continuing to help you build these hubs of content. Finally, advertising, which I'm sure some of you can do, some of you can't do, but from our point of view, it's a key remit for us being a, a trading fund. And advertising, as I mentioned, was, was launched in 2009, and we were the first government websites, and still are, to launch advertising. We provide advertising through web, video, and apps, and we work very, very closely internally. This is all managed internally as well. We don't use agencies. We, we see it as coming across as being government that we have to come across directly to the brand or to the agency in selling the opportunity to the Met Office. Clients that we've used and continue to work with are British Gas, RAC, Renault, EasyJet, Avis, and Benadryl. And the types of opportunities we offer around all of this content are severe weather warnings, UK forecasts, the events calendar, and seasonal content, which seems to be very, very key. So finally, with all of this, step six finally is how do you measure all this, how do you manage all this, and how do you monitor it all? It's all very well creating this. We have an actionable plan. Everyone's bought into what we're trying to do. But when your exec asks or when your director asks, what does this all mean? It's very, very important that it's all, it has clear objectives to start with, and it has very, very actionable measurement and management and how you monitor it all. So we've created key dashboards through Hitwise. We've created key dashboards through um, web trends as well. Hitwise, for example, we'll look at our clickstream analysis. We'll look at understanding on our upstream and downstream websites that are now engaging with us that weren't engaging with us before. We'll look at our search intelligence. Web trends, key analytics, very, very top level, which I'm sure you're all aware of. Non-branded terms, branded terms, visit duration, um, how many pages per visit, uh, these are all key metrics and very, very easy key metrics, I suppose, to get buy into teams, peers outside the digital marketing team. So very, very top level stats. We also also look at our SERPs, where we're ranking. Is it just the head terms? Are we looking at our long tail? Is each event page creating more and more search terms to that page rather than just relying on our branded terms? And obviously social media. How much, of, how much of the content we're pushing out of the event calendar through our social media is being retweeted? How, what percentage of new followers have come and joined the Met Office site during this specific campaign? And how much more traffic is being referred through our social media channels? So effectively, we're trying to create a hub of where all these different tactics lie across the organization. It's all coming together, providing one key target audience, or key strategy, I suppose. So very, very uh, briefly, I'll just go through, because um, I know time's nearly out, um, what we did around the pollen forecast. So the pollen forecast was a great example where we knew there was huge demand for hay fever sufferers in the UK from March, usually through to September, which is when the pollen season is. We saw it as a big opportunity for us. We saw that a number of our competitors provide hay fever content, pollen content, etc. We didn't do anything uh, two or three years ago. And we're authority content. At the end of the day, it's the Met Office. We drive high authority. We're seen as a place to go, perhaps, for that type of content to assist the UK public as to when there's a key. And it's a great tool for engagement. And obviously, it supports our advertising and sponsorship. We researched it. As I mentioned, we went through the content gap, as I mentioned earlier. We understood through Google Trends what's the search demand for pollen forecast, the key head terms, and also the long tail. 
we looked at our competitor analysis and we understood at that point, okay, the Weather Channel do that, Meteor Group do that, AccuWeather do that, where's our USP? How do we differentiate ourselves within the marketplace? On-page content, so it was key. Driving relevant content through our site, engaging our social media on the actual page to do with content. Did you know facts? In engaging our science team to drive content, not necessarily writing the content, but providing us insights into the type of science behind pollen. How is a pollen forecast created? How um, do we engage in pollen? How is it measured? And embracing that and turning that into Joe Public Speak, if you like. Obviously, taking into account the benefit of users that want to look at more industry-leading content from our science, which they can find. And obviously, video. So engaging video through pollen. How do we create a pollen forecast? Embracing the UK forecast pages with pollen. So targeted pages on the site around the pollen forecast. And how do we syndicate it all? So as I mentioned earlier, an infographic we've created a number of times throughout the year. We interchange it, we update it, we share it out to these new opportunities and targets that we have on the site. Weather widget around the pollen forecast providing a five-day widget. You working with the NHS, key authority site on how pollen is affected, hay fever alerts, um, how hay fever is impacted by the NHS, and it's, and it's just providing cross-marketing opportunities between these different sites, using our blog and creating meaningful content onto other websites, such as the Weather Club. And obviously advertising. At the end of the day, we're creating this content, we're driving lots and lots of traffic, and it's a fantastic opportunity for advertisers that are looking to engage in much more targeted niche opportunities. So Benadryl, for example, have worked with us for the last three years in sponsoring our pollen forecast, where we embed their, their logo. Um, it drives some assistance to them, and it provides some authority content through the site. And obviously, at the end of the day, how do we monitor this? How do we manage this? How do we measure all of this? Key stats, as I was mentioning earlier, that's all that's need to be known outside our team in terms of getting buy-in across the organization. How have we increased the visits to the site through specific pollen? How have we increased our market share, as an example? How have we increased engagement through social media channels? And how has it assisted to drive advertising through um, the pollen content? And that brings me to the end. Sorry, very, very quick, but into half an hour. Bang on. Thanks very much.